I'm very happy to welcome to the program this month Bishop Rieger. Welcome, Bishop. Thank you. Yeah. Where were you born and, and some first memories of church that you may have? I actually uh, was born in Framingham. My two aunts were supervisors down at the Framingham Hospital. One was the night supervisor, the other one was the day supervisor. So my mother knew that when she went, she'd have her sister on yes. duty. So I was born there, but I've lived all my life uh, it's in Worcester, and I lived in a special way in St. Peter's Parish. Okay, all right. So uh, your sacraments were mostly at St. Peter's First Communion? I baptized. Oh, okay. Uh, said my first Mass at St. Peter's, yeah. yes. Yeah. And um, your first thoughts of a vocation, were, were those uh, kind of a result of your time spent in the church, or was it more family-oriented, or both? I think probably both. Um, there was no doubt about it that we were blessed at St. Peter's of having extraordinary priests, uh, men like Father Ed Connors and Father Tom Daly. Father Billy Wells, they were just marvelous priests and gave us good example. I'd have to say also, however, that the faith community at St. Peter's is devotional. We have a upstairs church as well as a downstairs, and there was hardly any time, day or night, there would not be people visiting the church. I think their example, their faith, uh, many of them may have been older people, but they were good examples to all of us. In addition to that, uh, of course, my family. Mm. We were an altar server in your... Interestingly enough, I went to public school, and I went to Downing Street School and South High. And because I did, you could not serve on the altar. So when I got to be a sophomore at South, I switched to St. Peter's High School okay. because I wanted to be an altar boy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and after uh, high school at St. Peter's, where would you go next for... for Holy Cross College. Holy Cross. And from there to the seminary. Okay, how many years at Holy Cross? I was just there a year. Okay, and, and where did you go to seminary? I went to um, St. Clemens Hall uh, on Foster Street in Brighton, and it was the minor seminary at that time. And I finished the college course, and then I went across the way to the theology. Okay. When I speak to uh, younger priests about their vocation, and speaking to the vocation director, now of course nowadays we've got letters of recommendation and FBI criminal background checks and psychological uh, testing and and and, uh, and many interviews and so on. And uh, in, in your day, uh, was it a little bit more simplified? Uh, <laughs> Actually, it was very simplified. We probably first of all had to have a letter from the pastor. And in the spring, there were um, sort of oral exams, nothing written, and we had them, um, which was the first chancery in the diocese, and that is it at that Abbey's house uh, right next to the cathedral rectory. The, the basement of that house was used by Bishop Wright and the chancery officials as the first chancery. And so it was in that building that uh, other priests like uh, who were in my class, Father Dutra and Father George Lange, they too went there for a, sort of an entrance exam. Is that but, after, after uh, high school or after the Holy Cross? After Holy year, Cross. After one year at Holy yeah. Cross. Okay. Yeah. What happened would be that uh, there would be one priest who would give us a few uh, questions on history. Another one would test us on Latin. Bishop Wright was famous for bringing us in, handing us the Latin breviary, and asking us to translate a gospel or some passage from that. So it was, um, that's where we, and that was the entrance exam, really. And your, your first, uh, your, your ordination was at St. Paul's Cathedral? Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. It was uh, on Little Christmas, January 6th, 1958. Um, and um, myself and Father Charlie Dutrum um, and Father Andy Garapi was made a deacon uh, at our ordination. Later on, a few months later on, he was ordained. But um, originally, the uh, Cardinal had um, called us at seminary and said he was going to ordain us at Midnight Mass. And we can imagine, imagine being ordained at Midnight Mass at Christmas. And then he had to go to Rome. And so we said, well, we'll make it Little Christmas. So we ended up being ordained on Little Christmas. Was your first Mass at St. Peter's? Yes, my first low Mass was at St. Peter's. My first, what we used to call High Mass, was at St. Andrew's because uh, while I was in the seminary, the parish had been divided. And um, my folks ended up in St. Andrew's Parish, so that's where I had my first public Mass, really. Yeah. And what was your first assignment as a young My priest? My first assignment was a magnificent assignment. It was Our Lady of Lords in East Millbury. And I took a bus and I went out and I had six wonderful years. And they were grace-filled. And while I was there, we built the new church. And on the day the church was dedicated, uh, Bishop um, 
Flanagan told me he was going to transfer me. Oh. But until that moment, I spent all my time, and very happily so. You mentioned to us priests today you have sometimes have a hard time believing, newly ordained priests, that you, many priests did not have a car no. during their first no. assignment, no. Uh, and in order to get there, you had to take a bus out to, That's to, right. to yeah. Millbury. You took a bus. I got the bus in what is now uh, Notre Dame. It was at Salem Square. And so on your day off, you take the bus uh, Grafton Street into Salem, and then at the end of the day, you'd come back. Can we fast forward, but also touching upon the parishes you were at until the day, how does one learn that he is going to become a bishop? You know, a phone call, a letter? Yeah, really surprising <laughs> one. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we were looking at plans to build a new gym at St. Peter's. I was pastor of St. Peter's at the time, and I was in discussion with Frank Harvey, uh, talking about a new gym. And Bishop Harrington called and said he'd like to see me over at the house. And immediately, I thought he was going to transfer one of the associates. And it's a busy parish. St. Peter's wasn't as big as it was when I was young, but I went back there and succeeded Monsignor Sullivan. But it was a big enough parish, and we needed two or three associates. We had a lot of funerals. So I went over to High Ridge Road, ready to argue with him (laughs) about keeping an associate. And when I got in there, I was informed that the nuncio had called that morning and that I was to be an auxiliary bishop. What were your thoughts? Went through your head. Back to St. Paul's to be ordained. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Overwhelming challenge and honor. What were your thoughts of... uh, Um, uh, uh, I couldn't believe it was me, (laughs) (laughs) to be honest. (laughs) It was a wonderful thrill. Um, God has been very, very good in every assignment and in everything that I've been able to do in ministry. It has been exciting, worthwhile, and fulfilling. Mm -hmm. And your life changes dramatically in that you're not only in one parish now, you're in all 100 plus parishes with the with the um, confirmations and and everything else that goes with your work. It changes making the parish your family to making the whole diocese diocese. your family. The whole diocese then becomes familiar and all of the priests become closer to you. I imagine you've, you've been in almost every church in the, in the diocese. Many times. Every, <laughs> <laughs> every, every time. Any particular highlights from your priesthood or, or from being a bishop uh, in the last couple of minutes? I, yeah. um, I, you know, I think that I've um, been very blessed um, to be part of a lot of other things besides just parish work. Uh, work at Chancery, work particularly with the schools. Um, Father Martin Dunney, who was going on to get his doctorate at Harvard, and um, so he was superintendent of schools. So Bishop Flanagan asked me to fill in. So while I was pastor in Hopedale, I also was superintendent of schools for a while. And that exposed me to a whole different kind of challenge. And it's been true of other things that I've had. Uh, presently, even though I am retired, uh, Bishop McManus has permitted me to continue to work with the propagation of faith. So all of these things are extraordinarily fulfilling. You've been working very hard as a retired bishop. Well, <laughs> I see you everywhere. <laughs> Not that yeah, yeah, so thank you for your many years of service and even after retirement for working so hard and, and for helping us out in all the parishes that we have, Bishop. And I, 